Kenai Fjords National Park. Located in southern Alaska near the town of Seward, Kenai Fjords National Park is a wilderness covering around 670,000 acres of glaciated land and peninsula crossed sea. Named after the fjords carved by numerous glaciers throughout the park, the Kenai Fjords are home to abundant plant and animal species. The park's unique environment and rich history makes it a popular attraction for adventurers and scientists alike looking to explore the park. The Kenai Mountains that run through the park form as a result of the subduction of the Pacific Plate underneath the North American Plate. This process of subduction has, in the past, also pulled the Kenai Peninsula downwards while elevating the Denali Range, partially submerging some of the mountain peaks and making them islands. This location on the boundary of two tectonic plates makes earthquakes common, and some areas of the peninsula have experienced almost a meter of uplifting as a result of earthquakes, while others have experienced several meters of subsidence. The region in which the park is located sits atop the Chugach terrain, part of the larger Rangelia terrain that joined North America 50 to 60 million years ago. Fossils found in the rock indicate that the terrains could have come from China or Afghanistan, pushed by the rotation of the Pacific tectonic plate. The region also has a number of small plutons, typically present as islands, although some are found further inland, that attached to the terrain and crystallized around 59 million years ago. The bedrock underneath the park is primarily metasedimentary rock such as grey wackle, chert, and schist, with large amounts of igneous rocks such as granite and basalt also present around the fjords or in sea stacks. The igneous rock is primarily native to the region, while the sedimentary rock is primarily accreted from the late Cretaceous or early Tertiary periods. The movement of the sediment has created the loose rocky shore typical of many fjords in the region. Because of the tectonic activity underneath the Kenai fjords, the area is rich in elements and minerals such as iron, gold, silver, quartz, and zircon. As the bedrock of the area moved and fractured, these minerals were pushed upwards by water or fluid silica and eventually settled in veins in the mountains. Due to the presence of both harder rocks such as granite or granodiorite and softer sedimentary rocks, sea stacks are present throughout the park's fjords. Sea stacks are formed by the erosion of soft rock, which leaves harder rock standing in the sea. Glaciers are the largest force acting on the park's geology today, with 51% of the park's area covered in ice. During the Pleistocene era, colossal glaciers covered virtually all of Alaska, gradually moving and eroding the land underneath. With the recession of the glaciers starting around 10,000 years ago, features such as moraines, U-shaped valleys, and the fjords for which the park is named were exposed. Most glaciers in the park are fueled by the Harding Ice Field, a 300 square mile mass of ice and snow which can reach one mile in depth. The glacial erosion can feed minerals and nutrients from the ground into water, helping support the ecosystems of the park. The Kenai Fjords region is located in a subarctic climate and, combined with its proximity to the Gulf of Alaska, receives up to 60 feet of snow per year. The large body of water also serves to lessen the temperature fluctuations in the area, and the temperature usually stays between positive and negative 20 degrees Celsius. The summer months are often cloudy or rainy, with an average temperature in the tens or twenties, and the winter months are mostly sub-zero and lightly snowy, although strong precipitation and positive temperatures have been recorded. Flora and fauna in the park are abundant and unique due to the mix of marine, coastal, and inland ecosystems. The park's largest abiotic factor is glaciers, which provide water, nutrients, and even shelter for some organisms. While abiotic forces can negatively impact the organisms in the park, such as tsunamis drowning trees intolerant of salt water, other abiotic forces create environments in which life can thrive. 
As the glaciers recede, they open up more land for both plants and animals to inhabit. The first living organisms that begin to live in these spaces are mosses and lichens, which can cling onto hard-exposed surfaces. Larger and larger plants follow the mosses, which produce organic soil matter when they decay. Some plants, such as Sitka alder, can affix nitrogen from the atmosphere and enrich the soil. As plants become increasingly larger, animals follow in their wake, looking for food and, sometimes, shelter. As with most regions on Earth, different elevations create varied factors for life, and as a result, varied species of plants and animals are found across the gradient. Kenai Fjords National Park is no different. Close to sea level, small organisms, such as mosses, make their homes. Higher above sea level, shrubs, trees, and flowering plants share the environment with the animals that consume them. As elevation increases, big trees gradually disappear, as do shrubs, and eventually most plants and animals, leaving the rocky or frozen surface of mountains in solitude. In addition to land, receding glaciers open up, or create, bodies of water in the forms of fjords and rivers for marine organisms. The basis of life in water is phytoplankton, which converts sunlight into energy for living organisms. Larger organisms, zooplankton, feed on phytoplankton and are in turn consumed by even larger, carnivorous organisms. Some species of birds share both land and marine environments, feeding on fish in the sea and nesting on the rocky shores close to water. As with land environments, a gradient of water depths exists in the marine environment. Large organisms, such as orcas or fin whales, typically stay in deeper waters, while shallower waters are frequented by seals and fish. Kenai Fjords National Park boasts an impressive variety of plants. The forest ecosystem is divided into two categories, deciduous and coniferous. The prevalent tree species in coniferous forests is the Sitka spruce, with willow, alder, mountain hemlock, and black cottonwood also present, while the prevalent tree species in deciduous forests is the Sitka alder. Berries such as Alaskan blueberry, elderberry, baneberry, and watermelon berry appear in these forests. In alpine meadows, flowering plants such as fireweed, nootka lupine, and columbine flower decorate the ground. Large land animals include brown and black bears, moose, wolves, and mountain goats, and small animals include marmots, coyotes, beaver, and river otters. 191 species of birds are present in the park, with a large portion of them making use of both marine and land environments, fishing in the sea and nesting on land. Marine animals include five species of whales, orcas, salmon, seals, sea lions, and sea otters. Native species of animals are threatened by many factors. Invasive species, present throughout the park, outcompete native organisms due to the lack of predators, decreasing the populations of native species. Climate change also threatens the existence of some species as they struggle to adapt to the rapidly changing environment. Other human factors, most prominently the Exxon Valdez oil spill of 1989, also threaten to poison animals or their food sources. The Kenai Fjords region has a history of human habitation by Native Americans and Western explorers. Although the region was rich in marine resources, it lacked resources on land. In addition, glaciers, earthquakes, and tsunamis could easily collapse or submerge early settlements. Archaeological findings suggest that the native people who lived here were few in number. Of the few settlements that have been found, most are around 800 years old, and very few are over 900 years old due to an earthquake around the time that drastically shifted the coastline. The majority of the Chugach people's life was oriented around the sea. The sea offered them food, but it could also bring storms. The natives likely hunted whales as a large source of food, doing so with harpoons and smaller mammals with bows and arrows. They built shelters, wooden huts insulated with moss, 
in places where they would be protected from harsh weather but would still have easy access to the sea. Intertribal relations with other tribes to the north and southeast included both trade and warfare. Russian explorers reached the area in the 1740s and soon established the fur industry and, later, other industries such as coal mining, fishing, and ship construction. Expeditions by American, British, and Spanish ships were also fairly common. As more and more people came, permanent settlements were established. Russian and American companies cooperated in business around the Kenai Peninsula, and soon, with Russia's sale of Alaska to the United States, the Alaska Commercial Company began their industrial work. In the late 1880s, substantial amounts of gold were discovered in the Kenai Peninsula, and miners came to the region, sparking an economic boom. This led to the creation of the town of Seward and the Alaska Railroad for easier transportation to the town, as well as many other highways later on. Expeditions to map the geography and topography of the area were also undertaken by the United States Geological Survey. At this time, interest for conserving the natural resources of Alaska was rising. In 1907, the Chugach National Forest was created by Theodore Roosevelt, who also quickly acted to expand it. The U.S. Forest Service recommended that the Kenai Peninsula should also be protected. In 1941, Franklin Roosevelt created the Kenai National Moose Range to protect animals in the area. Tourists began to visit the region more frequently, sparking a second economic boom in Seward, helped considerably by U.S. military installations during World War II. Although efforts to preserve the Kenai Fjords region existed before the 1970s, they were opposed by native land claims and did not pick up until 1971. In 1971, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was passed, making it possible for the National Park Service to carry out conservation efforts in Alaska. The Kenai Fjords area wasn't a primary objective, however, and only four small areas of the Kenai Peninsula were preserved. George Hartzog and his planner, Richard Stenmark, created the idea of a monument at the Harding Ice Field that would span 800,000 acres and protect the ice field and peninsula shore. This idea overlapped potential expansion of the Kenai Moose Range and was scrapped. A task force was created to study the area and potential conservation, deciding that the National Park Service was best suited for the task. In 1973, the National Park Service released a document on the Kenai Fjords National Monument, along with a proposition in Congress. Due to the Watergate scandal, the legislature was delayed until 1978, when Jimmy Carter signed the bill to create Kenai Fjords National Monument on the 1st of December. Two years and one day later, along with some changes to the boundaries of the monument, on December 2nd, 1980, Jimmy Carter signed the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, converting the monument into a national park. After the creation of the park, the National Park Service conducted work on clearing or creating roads for easier public accessibility, research on the park's geology and wildlife, and development of visitor information. The park gets approximately a quarter of a million visitors annually. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational films. Check out the featured channels for more content or more videos on this channel for more education.